My name is Boris Chavez. I'm the founder and CEO at Census. And I'm just really excited to be here today to talk about reverse CTL and all the changes it's brought to our industry. And before I get kind of going, I also want to thank Airbyte for hosting us at this event. Uh, really excited to see all the various talks and inter interact with you know everyone in, in, in the data ecosystem. It's, it's always exciting to be in our space. So I think it's probably best to kind of start at the beginning, right? And reverse ETL is something that we started a few years ago. Uh, a company launched about two years ago and actually two, two and a half now. And what I found is that it really changed the way people interact with data. So what is reverse ETL? Before, let, let's make sure we get our, our definitions right. Uh, on the one hand, it's a funny name because ETL doesn't really have a, a direction, but simply put, it, it, is a, it, is a, it is a system by which you can take data from your data warehouse uh, any kind of data in your data warehouse. But normally this is data like insights and cleaned up data models and synchronize it directly into applications where people are doing their work, where people are automating their workflows. So that might be something like a Salesforce or a Marketo or a Facebook advertising, uh, uh, like Facebook audiences. And what makes this really great is historically, if we were on a data team, the best we could do, I feel like, with data was presented in a really pretty picture or in a really pretty spreadsheet. And that's good. It allows the whole business to be informed about what's going on, but it doesn't make you really data driven. And when you can put data directly into the applications that the business team uses, you can actually create work for them. You can actually uh, change, for example, the way in which a uh, support ticket is prioritized. You can create opportunities for your sales team. You can customize, personalize emails. There's just tremendous things you can do once the data is put into action. And I think that's really the big difference between traditional business intelligence and what you can do with reverse CTL. And what happens when you do this is you get this really interesting effect uh, that in economics people call induced demand. So this is kind of like when you add a lane on the highway and you end up with more cars rather than less traffic. And this is exactly what happens at every organization that deploys something like census. What happens is you enable one team, for example, your marketing team to write better emails because now they have more knowledge about what users are doing. And then they start asking for even more columns about users. They want to know even more fine grained information about what they're doing. And then the sales team will say, Hey, wait, 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 we also want to know this stuff so that we can have a better phone call or know exactly when to start a renewal conversation. And, and this is what I mean by I kind of this idea of opening the floodgates. Once we enable people to get access to, to the data in your warehouse and really kind of have at it in a way that it is more than a picture, you, you end up growing the demand for your team and for your infrastructure. And so the last 18 months, it's kind of been the almost like what you'd call the lab phase. Uh, this is where a lot of early customers uh, in the industry, people who are early adopters of the modern data stack have battle tested this. And I feel like our journey now as a, as a community is to get the rest of the world on this, on this stack and to help them see what they can do uh, and, and really grow the, the impact of their data. And so what do I mean by that? The truth is, no matter what function you have in your business, you can improve it with reverse ETL. Take your marketing team. They are dying to write and build better campaigns. And what is a better campaign? At a very least, it's a campaign that knows what users are doing. None of us wants to get an email about a feature that we're being advertised if we're already using that feature. But a lot of times marketing teams don't know because that that information is not connected to their systems. And then if they're advertising on Facebook, Google, et cetera, you want to build audiences that are very, very precise. You know, if you're 
if you're just spraying your advertising to you know millions of users without making it targeted, you're just spending a lot of money and not getting a lot of benefit. We're just back in the old days of, of mass media advertising. And that's not what anyone wants anymore. So the way marketers have historically tried to solve this is actually by bypassing the data team altogether and by buying and deploying these complex customer data platforms, right? These CDPs, which are basically data warehouses of their own. And this is something you can fix. You can finally help the marketing team be free of like managing an entire separate stack that has less quality on the data. And marketing is just one of so many functions that you can serve uh, with better, better data and more accurate data. So uh, we, we see this at companies like Canva who started with a marketing scenario, but now they, they sync data to their sales tools and to their finance tools. So you can help the finance team actually build better forecasts by getting really precise billing data back into their systems. You can help the support team have better SLAs with their customers by reducing the, the, the by improving the, the, the ticket queues based on how valuable a customer is. But again, that information is locked away in the data warehouse, in the data team. So there's just so much you can do. And all of this extra demand actually puts this additional pressure on us. And the real pressure for all of us in the industry now is to create higher quality in the data. Because the whole point of automating and taking action with the data is that you no longer need to test everything at the end user. You're saying the data team is serving the business and the business can just take action. So it's unbelievably important to have precision, accuracy, and, and the ability to monitor and observe how your data models change over time so that you can continually provide high quality data to your team. So in some ways, reverse ETL not only induces higher demand from your, your stakeholders, it also creates this pressure, this catalyst for investing in data data operations and data quality and data observability. And there's really no limit to how much we can improve here. Uh, we, you know, we should all be investing in more testing for our data models, uh, versioning of course, right? So most of you, I assume by now are using something like DBT, but really any kind of data versioning is valuable. Uh, and then people don't talk about this much, but there's also all these areas around governance, right? So the more people ask for your data, the more you serve people with data, you're going to need to think about security, visibility, who gets uh, uh, personally identifiable information, all this kind of stuff. And all of this, you know, power to serve your, your stakeholders comes with more responsibility. So one of the things that we've had to build into our product is kind of guardrails along the way to help you prevent mistakes from spreading across the company. So census, for example, has built in validation now to make sure that bad data doesn't escape. Uh, and then we even put those tests directly into GitHub so that the engineering team doesn't have to know exactly what's happening in Salesforce can just get notified whenever their pull requests are going to break the system. And this is really where I think we're going to go in the next few years, we're going to have to combine two things. One is enabling the business team to self serve all of this data. You can't possibly do all the work for them. They have to come and do it themselves because every team wants this data. And on the other hand, you are serving them core data models that you have to treat as a contract between you and the rest of the business. And so a lot of our tools are going to help you manage the contract, right? With a set of entities that we can test and validate for you at all times. And it's going to help the business teams just pick and choose what data they want when they want without having to ask you for every little thing. And so it's really just an exciting time to make our whole infrastructure, all of our investments in data more valuable for the rest of the business. So I love talking about this. I'm really glad I was able to, to, to be here. Uh, and if you have really any questions or comments, you can email me, you can hit me up on Twitter. Uh, and just really thanks again for, for having me, Arbite.